Thanks for joining us for another Enrichment with a Gifted Guy. What we're going to be talking about today is how to conduct proper research. The internet is a really big place, so that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is the internet is a really big place. So when you go onto the internet, there are lots of avenues and dead ends and wrong ways and, and, and things that you are not looking for when you're going to make a search on the internet. So the question becomes, how do you make a good search on the internet? What does that look like? Uh, how would you formulate that search? So the first thing you gotta, you gotta figure out is what is, what is your subject area? So for, for example, let's say that you want to research dogs. Well, if you put in the word dogs in the, in the search engine, this is what you get. So let's go to a, a, a search engine such as Google, which is one of the more popular ones. And if I am researching dogs, I can simply put in dogs. And then this is what I get. I get 3.48 billion results. Not 3.48 million or 3048,000 but 348 billion results. You don't have the time to go through all of these results to find the information that you're looking for. So you have to refine your search a little bit. You have to think about what not, what's not the topic that you're looking for, but what, what uh, about that topic are you trying to, to figure out? So for example, they have here, here's the, the best dogs, um, here's the cutest dogs, here's the most dangerous dogs, um, so there are lots of ways to refine that search depending on what it is that you're trying to look for. So step number one in the research process is constructing research questions. So you are conducting research about not a topic, but a question about a topic. Um, and so you have to figure out what question it is that you're trying to answer, that you're trying to explore, that you're trying to figure out. And then this question does, a, does a, a good job of narrowing down your choices so you're not, you don't have such a large net that's cast. You, you actually you know, specify what it is that you're looking for. So let's look at our example of dogs. The nice thing about a site such as Google is it actually narrows it down for you. So for example, if you scroll down here, they put in here, uh, questions that people commonly ask about dogs. So what is the most dangerous dog? What is the smartest dog? Why is a dog a good pet? What are the top five best dogs? So it is actually creating uh, research questions that you could be asking. And of course, you may not find any of your research questions here. And so you might want, you ha may have to go and, and construct your own. And so this is what this might look like. So when you're constructing your research questions, you kind of have to figure out whether you're looking for facts or opinions or both. So for example, if I want to ask the question, what is the cutest dog? Well, this is obviously an opinion question because different people are going to have different opinions on what the cutest dog is. Um, and so you are not going to find a whole lot of facts on this. You're going to find a lot of uh, opinions. You're going to find uh, not necessarily research, but you're going to find people that are just, you know, saying why they love their particular dog or whatnot. So that is an opinion type question. A fact type question would be, what is the largest dog breed? This is not an opinion. It is a fact. If you look up what the largest dog breed is, it will give you an answer of what that is. Um, and you might do a combination of things, of fact and opinion. So um, what is the most dangerous dog? And why does it behave that way? So the most dangerous dog uses statistics. So, you know, uh, this dog has attacked this many people, and so it can use statistics. But as for why it behaves the way it does, that's speculation. That is opinion. That is, it can be based on science, but it also is going to not necessarily be a cold, hard fact. Um, in, in, in my opinion, the kinds of questions you should ask should be bigger picture questions, like really interesting questions uh, that you've wanted to know. So, for example, let's say you're trying to convince your parents um, to get you a dog. You've always wanted a dog and you're trying to convince them to get you a dog. Well, what's the question that you would want to ask? So what are the health benefits 
of owning a dog. With a question like this, you can make an argument. So you could say to your parents, I think we should have a dog because these are the effects that owning a dog has on people. And then you would give some of those benefits that you researched um, on what, what makes a dog, you know, what, what makes people healthier if they have dogs. And so um, you need to do the same thing. You need to construct these research questions in your head. You have to narrow it down from your big topic into something very specific. And you want to make sure that you pick something that can be researched. So if you put in, you know, uh, what is the dog breed of Lassie? You are going to get an answer really quick. And your research is over and it's not much of a research project. You just found an answer. So keep in mind, this is a research project. And so you're trying to ask bigger questions that are going to dig a little deeper than those surface level questions. So once you've constructed your research question, you want to narrow it down even further. And this is the second step in the research pro process is that you will want to identify keywords that will, you will use in the search. If you write out the entire sentence, it might, it might eliminate some websites because it doesn't have that exact phrasing. But if you just use keywords, um, websites use those keywords to try to identify sites that would be appropriate for what you're looking for. So this is what this looks like. So here is our research question of what are the health benefits of owning a dog? So I can take this, I can put it directly into a Google search and see what I get. And so I get some articles on 10 health benefits of owning a dog, eight science-based benefits and all these pretty good time.com. I mean, pretty reputable sites. Um, and so, but if I take this search and I, and I refine it a little bit by just pull, plucking out the keyword. So I don't need this. I just put health benefits dogs. I can use that in my search instead. I'm going to get a more, more specific search to those things because it's not going to eliminate articles based on those other things. So, and some of them are the same ones, but you do see some different ones that you, you saw before than what you saw before. Um, and so uh, you do not write necessarily in complete sentences when you're putting in a search. You're just putting the main keywords that are gonna trigger those websites. Uh, when people create their websites, they often have tags that they put in there and that's what it goes to. But if you put the word the or of, or you know uh, when, then it might eliminate those particular websites because those websites don't use those specific articles or words. Uh, so that's, a, that's the second step is that you want to identify keywords and use that in your search. Now that you have constructed your research question and you've taken that research question and narrowed it down even further by just plucking out the keywords, then you want to actually conduct your search. And there are lots of different search engines that you can do in order, in order to achieve this. There are lots of different search engines that you can use on the internet. Um, one of the more popular ones happens to be Google. Um, and Google can be used as a search. You just search type in what you're searching in there. Another one that can be used is Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo also, you can put something in the search bar and it will give you hits. So let's put in uh, benefits in dog. And what I might get is a different look. So if you look here, here's the uh, 17 Beautiful Benefits of Owning a Dog, Breed Advisor. So you get these articles. If we go to Google and put the exact same one in, we put in uh, benefits, owning dogs. We have a different first site, the 10 science-based benefits of having a dog. Um, and and so they kind of go in a different order. So using different search engines might give you a different look. If you can't find what you're looking for on Google, you might go to Yahoo or vice versa. And there are other ones as well. So there's Bing, um, which is one that, that's used. 
And uh, Bing is one I like to use specifically for photos. It's really good for getting up photos. But if I put in here, you know, benefits, dogs, I'm going to get, oh, I've got my 17 beautiful benefits of owning a dog, the same one that I got through my Google search. So, but like I said, Bing is a good one, especially for photographs. Uh, so if you go to images, uh, they have all sorts of images in here. So if we search in, so if we benefits owning dogs, and we're going to get visuals here. So we can click on so benefits of owning a pet and so on and so forth. So I usually use Bing when I'm looking for images. There are other, there are other ones out there as well. Um, but these are, these are the more common ones. One thing I want to point out, which I see is a common mistake, is when you go to cite your source of where you got your information, I'll have students say that they found it on Google or they found it on Yahoo. That's not where you found the information. You found sites on this that allowed you. So, for example, going back to our example, um, going back to the when we we're talking about the um, uh, benefits of dogs. Go into this first site and find some information. I didn't find this information on Google. I found it on this site. Um, Google is merely the doorway to get you to these sites. So when you go into a library and you pull a book off the shelf and you look at it and get information from it, you don't cite the doorway at the to the library, you cite the book. And this is similar to this. You would come to this, and if you find something, you would cite this website. So you should never cite just Google or Yahoo. Um, and when you do cite, you, what you wanna do is you wanna get the entire address, so you can copy and paste it, and simply just put it in a Word document or a Google document. So I can throw it over here in a Google document. And, and then this keeps me a running um, uh, kind of, narrative of where I'm finding things. So I could go like this and put that website in there. And now if I need to go back to that website, I have that information. So this is when we be taking notes. Uh, so if I find a piece of information that's really interesting, I could copy and paste that information. And I can simply put it in my notes that I have. I could paraphrase it in my own words. Um, I do suggest that what you don't do, I see a lot of students do is they cut and paste in their notes and then they cut and paste the exact wording into their document or whatever their research is. That's plagiarism. So make sure that you cite the source, but you put it into your own words. But this would give you, you know, you could take this and summarize this in your own words. So now that you have, you've constructed your research questions, you might want to, even before you start researching, identify websites that might be good websites to go to. Because here's the tricky thing about the internet is there's a lot of um, misinformation on the internet or a lot of opinions that are not based on fact or a lot of opinions that are just crazy. And so you need to try to find legitimate websites and knowing and having the confidence that if you go to this website and find information, it's probably going to be accurate. Um, and so when you do your search, this is what this might look like. This is why you identify reputable websites. So if you're doing your search and you come across the American Kennel Club, which is obviously a reputable site, it's got a, a reputation for being um, an, a good or national organization, they actually have their own search engine. So you, do, you don't have to use Google or, or Yahoo to search for what you're searching for. You can use that. So I can put in here, benefits, owning dog. And it's going to give me hits from its site on these. So I could come to these and click on these, and I could get information that I could use to conduct my research. Um, so the many ways kids benefit from having a dog. Fifth and final step that you want to do is, in order to make your search even more appropriate, you can add tags to the end of your search that um, do this. So for example, if you were looking up a topic that um, and what you're finding is that it's taking to a lot of college sites that you don't understand or research papers that have nothing that are a little bit over your head, um, you want to make it more friendly for your age level. So you could simply add the tag for kids. And what it will do is it will um, then pull up sites that were designed for kids. And there are other tags that you can use as well.
take this for example. So on Google, if I put in benefits of owning dogs and I get these, I get AKA, I get these mental floss, I get which is really a good resource, but maybe not appropriate for middle school kids or elementary kids. So depending upon uh, who you are doing the research, you could just put in here for kids. And what you'll get is dog is good, psychology today. Uh, so what you're getting is you're getting more kid-friendly posts. Or you could say for students as a tag, and that will give you possibly different ones that you have. You could say you could do so say you're in high school. You could be as specific as high school students. And see what it said. You're in edutop edutopia, you get a completely different uh, look based upon this, and it's making it more kid friendly um, or more friendly to your target um, audience uh, and and in your level of understanding. Uh, so make sure that when you if you're having if you're running across a lot of sites that are um, kind of not giving you really good information, you can refine that search even more by adding tags. Uh, to make it more appropriate for you. The five steps to conducting research then is to construct a research question, two, identify keywords from this research question, three, identify what search engine that you're going to use, number four, identify reputable sites that you can use because they have searches on them as well, and then fifth is to add tags to, to try to refine your search even more. If you do these five steps, you will find yourself a uh, much easier time doing your research. You'll, you will have to spend less time uh, you know, fumbling about trying to find uh, good information. Uh, and, and I know that requires doing some work ahead of time, but in the long run, that really pays off because it's saving you time.